Hey y'all, how are you guys doing? My name is JS Method or Coach JS or Jamie you guys may know me as and today we're talking about how to get out of platinum from mid lane. So today we're going to talk about a couple of concepts to add to this series. Um, I'm going to talk about how rank is an average so the episodes kind of build on each other. You want to, you know, make sure you're at least um, going through the last episode of your rank to make sure you're not kind of holding yourself back too much that way. We're going to talk about what I see uh, from my platinum players that I coach. We're going to see the skills required to reach diamond and the most common mistakes I see. So let's hop into it. So the first thing I want to talk about is that your rank is an average of all of your skills. Um, if you're challenger in one thing, if you're, you know, challenger in like some sort of mechanic or doing some certain thing, but like your iron and everything else, it's going to average out here. I have a little, uh, I, I have a little equation. I say platinum. Like, let's say we have a player where half of their games, they play like a diamond player and the other half of their games, they play a gold player. Well, if you get half diamond, half gold, it averages out to platinum, right? And that's how your rank goes. So it's important that you guys watch the previous episodes because, you know, you may be a platinum player and you may go through this episode and say, well, I really don't have any of these mistakes. Well, then that means you probably have lots of the mistakes in the last video, but you're also overperforming on these things. Now... That's uh, another reason why I brought this OP.GG, and this is actually an OP from my Smurf account, uh, one of my Smurf accounts in Diamond. But people will bring me VODs, and, and you can see that people play at different levels, right? This game, Diamond 1 average game, I played very, very well. I was 4-1-4. Four, four. I was, you know, I got ace, which means OP.GG thought I played the best. All my teammates were trolling. Things did not go well. Uh, but I played very well. So I played this game higher than a Diamond 1 player would, right? I played this game very, very well. However, down at the bottom here, we have a game where I inted. I have very low CS per minute for playing Vladimir. I'm 0-4. I only have 1 KP in this Diamond 1 game. I played way worse than a Diamond 1 player, right? This may be, a you know, a Diamond 3 or a Diamond 4 gameplay. This is really, really bad. And then these ones are somewhere in the middle. So the reason of me writing this out, like let's say I played this one like a Masters 100 player... These ones I played, you know, eh, Diamond 2, Diamond 1, you know, we still lost, so there's still some room to work. And then here I played like a Diamond 4 player. The reason writing this out is so important is because we want to be able to kind of prioritize what's more important to work on. If we're trying to reach Diamond, and half of the games we play at a Diamond level, then we don't need to worry about the Diamond ones. We need to take out the Gold games, right? Same thing for this OP down here. If this player is trying to hit Masters, then we don't worry about the game where they already play like a Masters player. We worry about the games where they played like a Diamond 4 player, because that's going to hold you back a lot. So we would say, put the most emphasis you can on this game, and then put a good amount of emphasis on these two games, and then probably don't worry too much about this one, right? So rank is an average. You may do some things higher than your level. You may do some things worse than your level. But assuming that you've played enough games and we're in Platinum, um, your rank is relatively accurate and to get to the next level we're going to work on improving the lower average okay so let's start talking about platinum players specifically what do i see from platinum players so platinum is roughly the top 10 percent of the community these players have usually you know they've played the game a, a decent amount um and you're really starting to get an idea of the champion you play right? You, you guys have stronger uh, champion identity. You guys have stronger lane phases. You guys know how to kind of get leads. You know concepts like, you know, you, you know how to freeze, you know how to push, you you know how to, you know, cheat a recall. You know how your champion wants to get leads. Um, however, these players, I, I would almost call plat players selfish players in that they're a lot better at what they want to do, but they don't think about anybody else at all. They have a big lack of awareness of their own teammates. They have a big lack of awareness of wind conditions, right? This is a very common thing you hear about coaches saying what you need to improve on. Wind conditions is super big mid lane and, and playing towards your comp. You need to know what your team wants to do if you want to help them achieve that goal, right? You need to know what your teammates are doing and thinking so you can play accordingly. Um, I also had this idea that I call oppositional empathy. And this just means being able to put yourself in your lane opponent's shoes, right? Plat players often lack the ability to understand what their opponent wants at any given moment. That's a skill that we really want to work on. Um, and then another big thing we see is suboptimal rotations and, and very kind of slow or bad or misinformed late game positioning. 
Um, so this is what I say as a plat player. You guys have a really good start on you, but you're really selfish and we need to kind of understand that this is a team game. So to get to the next level and to kind of develop our skills more, we're going to be a lot more aware of not only our teammates, but of the enemy team and our opponent as well. So skills to pick up. Um, the first thing, oppositional empathy. I mentioned this in the last slide. This is being able to put yourself in your opponent's shoes at any moment. You want to know what their win condition is, is from the beginning of the game. You want to know when they want to trade. You want to know when they power spike, when they do all these things. So to start doing this, in our games, we're going to ask all of the time, and in our reviews especially, what does my opponent want? Any review you're in, you can just take a moment you're looking at and ask, what does my opponent want right now? Is he trying to last it? Is he trying to push? Is he trying to rotate? Is he trying to freeze? Is he trying to wait? Is he trying to speed the game up? Is he trying to play slow? What is my opponent doing? Um, other ways that we can get better at this is watch reviews from the opponent's perspective. So you can watch your own games from the opponent's perspective, but you can also go and look at VODs from Hyalo and watch the matchup from the enemy's perspective. So let's say you main, I don't know, let's say you main Victor, right? So normally you would watch a Victor's perspective versus the champion trying to get better at. Let's say, I don't know, it's a, let's say you, you want to learn how to play against Kiana. So you're watching a Victor versus Kiana matchup. Um, well, if you want to learn more about the Kiana and you want to get a more well-rounded perspective, let's actually watch the Kiana versus Victor. Let's watch the Kiana's perspective. So you can see their cooldowns and you can see their clicks and when they want to go in and when they're playing passive and when, when they're playing aggressive. Let's watch it from the opponent's perspective. Um, another thing that's really important to keep working on this is before every single game asking what is considered winning for my opponent. If we're playing Victor versus Kiana, well as Victor we know we want to farm and we know we want to kind of, you know, play a little bit slower in scale. Well, what does the Kiana want to do? What's her win condition? And it's really important to actually ask this and go through that thought experiment because once you understand that Kiana is going to want to create chaos and she's going to want to solo kill you and then she's going to want to go roam around and solo kill everybody else, um, you can kind of play around those opportunities a little bit more. So that's the first thing, oppositional empathy. Now, the second thing is being more aware of your teammates. Stronger information gathering and awareness. So information gathering, this just means like move your camera, please. I see so many platinum players just not looking at their teammates. They don't look at their minimap. They don't look at, they don't move their camera. Looking at the minimap is, is not enough. That's actually why I have this little picture of F keys up here, because if you can learn to F key so you can move your camera to the lanes, um, this helps with information gathering a ton because if you're just F keying by default, it's really hard to not see what's going on. Um, so watch your teammates, watch their body language, watch what they're trying to do. Ask what your teammates want to do. What's their win condition? Understand what the team wants to get to win, right? This is another way of saying win condition. Does our team want to get picks? So do we have to facilitate, you know, pushing aside, like pushing two lanes. And then when we push these two lanes, we're going to like get picks in this vision where uh, like in, in the spot where we have the prio or does our team want to just five man siege mid? Or does our team, do we have a really early game team and we drafted three winning lanes? So we have to just all win lane and then stack all the early dragons and if the game extends, do we lose? What's the win condition? What do our teammates want to do? And let's play around that. Let's help facilitate our teammates making the correct decision, right? So that requires looking at them, looking at them. Um, be aware of what your teammates want and what they're doing and what they're doing next. This is particularly important with your jungler because mid lane is basically just a 2v2 with the mid jungle. I always tell people, um, mid is to jungle what support is to ADC, right? We, we create a lot of space for our jungler. We should follow up with our jungler. We should play around our jungler. Um, so we constantly have to have this like really big just focus and awareness of what our jungler is doing, what their win condition is, right? Are, are they a Belveth, so they just want to power farm the whole game? Or is it a Xin Zhao who wants to just perma gank the whole game? And 
when are they trying to do it? Are they finishing their clear? Are they in the middle of a clear? Are they going to be busy for the next couple minutes? Are they ganking bottom? Or can you help gank bottom? Be aware of what they're doing. Um, and then this kind of leads into my next point of jungle awareness. Jungle awareness is a big part, not only for your own jungle, which is really, really important. So you can kind of match your pressure with them, right? That's what the concept tempo is. Tempo is matching your pressure with your teammates, particularly your jungler uh, if you're a mid laner. Um, so I'll just write the word tempo, like that's kind of a big part of what tempo is. But also the enemy jungler. Do we know the timers that we need to know? Are we warding at the right time? Are we using our first ward correctly? You know, do we know the 2.30 ward timer, right? 2.30 is when uh, the enemy jungler, like pretty much any jungler in the game can fit a gank in here because it's when they're kind of rotating over or they're three camping into ganking. So we have to have some vision or some jungle tracking down by then. Do we know what's happening at 315? Do we know when their first buff spawns at 650? Do we know when dragon spawns all of these timers, right? These timers are really, really important because you have to kind of match your pressure with them. Again, that goes back into tempo. So these are the scales that oftentimes I see platinum players missing. And if you're a platinum player, I would go down one by one and ask yourself if you have these skills and work on these. Get stronger camera control, get stronger information gathering learn what your opponent wants at every given point and learn what both of the junglers want not just your jungler and not just the enemy jungler learn what both want right okay so most common mistakes um i talked a lot about the most common mistakes you'll see in this elo in the last two slides so a lot of this is going to be kind of reiteration but number one Camera control and awareness. I cannot tell you how many platinum players will bring me VODs or, or will want to get coaching and they just do not move their camera. And it's like, you cannot make a high quality decision if you don't give yourself the opportunity to have the information. You cannot make a good decision without the information. So move your camera, gather the information. Um... The next mistake is mental approach philosophy. I mentioned this in every single episode and it's it's because this is the biggest reason people plateau. Um, if you're plateaued and you're not getting the rank you want, it's because of the, the framework you have that it, you understand the game in. If you're not getting the results you want, it's because something is stopping you from doing the things you have to do to get to the next step, right? And that's usually mental approach or philosophy. Um... I have a whole playlist on this and I mentioned every episode, so I'm not going to go too deep on it, but I'll link the playlist in the description. Go check those out. They're really, really important, especially if you're plateaued. If you're not getting the results you want, change your framework so you can try to get different results. Um, another super common mistake, especially in platinum, when we start to get to kind of these higher elo brackets where platinum's like the top 10%, we really start to forget our earlier fundamentals. Um, we need to constantly be improving the fundamentals, even where I'm at, where I'm climbing, you know, in high masters and up into GM and, and these like at the very, very top of the ladder, we need to constantly, always, always, always be improving the fundamentals constantly because you can always be faster. You can always get stronger with the fundamentals and by the fundamentals, I think I mentioned them in the first video, how to get out of silver from mid lane. So if, if you want a refresher, that's good to go check. Okay. Forgetting the earlier fundamentals. So it's super important to constantly be improving the fundamentals. Um, it's pretty common, especially at this higher elo bracket where, you know, platinum is the top 10% of the community. We kind of get this ego and we say, you know, I've, I've already learned the fundamentals. I've learned the basics. Now let's learn the special things. And it's like, that's not true because you always, there's always a way to be faster. There's always a way to be stronger with the very basic fundamentals and within your champion. Um, even at my level where I'm pushing up into the higher LPs and masters and up into grandmaster and you know at the very very top of the ladder There is always a way to get faster and stronger and tighter to the fundamentals So in the first video in get out of silver from mid lane I mentioned kind of a little list of mid lane fundamentals that can be good to go review and make sure that you're kind of getting faster at them You want to be diamond in the fundamentals. You want to have a diamond foundation Not a gold foundation or a platinum foundation so that's things like, you know, your lane phase dominance, your, the amount, your, you know, your camera control, your roaming, your wave management, your champion mechanics, your, your champion mastery, all of this stuff, stay tight to it and keep improving it. 
Don't think that you just learn your foundation and you get a foundation done and you're done. You are always improving and always working on your foundation. So never forget that. A lot of times people will, will forget that and then they spend too much time trying to optimize things that don't matter. And it's like, I don't care how pretty the thing is you're trying to do if the foundation it's built on is really bad. So fix the foundation. Um, the last most common mistake I see is just not respecting the 2v2 and the 3v3. Again, I mentioned this last slide. As a mid laner, we have to be really aligned with our jungle. We have to be really aligned with both supports. We have to know, you know, how often do both supports want to roam? How is that going to impact my lane? How is that going to happen, right? How is that going to impact the jungle? How does that impact our team's win condition as a whole? So talking about win conditions, talking about jungle awareness, all of these things, it's super, super important to get from platinum to diamond. Um, one thing I'll add that actually helped me a lot personally is learning how to add. Learn to add. And what I mean by this is learn how much things are worth, right? One normal six minion wave. Let's say, you know, it's the three melee minions and the three casters. That's six minions. Six minion wave is worth how much do you know? It's 105 gold plus the XP. And then if there's a cannon, you add in the cannon, which has, it's a variable amount. Um, so if you roam bottom and there's a wave in the middle and they get the wave and then you lose the opportunity for the wave. So it's a two wave swing. What do you lose? You lose 210 gold, all of the XP and the priority. So, you know, whether that means they get a plate or whether they get vision control, whatever, this is what you're losing. So what does the roam have to be worth? The roam has to be worth more than this, more than half the time. So this basically comes out to about a kill. That means if you're going to leave lane like this, you have to get more than a kill, more than half the time, or that roam is never, ever, ever worth it. So learning how to add and taking that into your games and your decision making and in your reviews helps a lot because you can kind of say, well, this is worth this much. That play doesn't make sense. Or there's a double kill bottom. It doesn't make sense to stay mid for this wave. Or my lane left, but I'm getting two plates. Well, two plates is basically a kill worth of income. So it doesn't matter what my lane's getting bot lane. I'm getting two waves and two plates. I basically get to snowball and end the game here. So learn how to add and know what objectives are worth. Or, and, and kind of know, know values. I'll, I'll just write no values. So understanding values and being able to compare them properly. Super, super, super important. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys are enjoying this series. If this helped you, let me know. If you have any other ideas, let me know. Leave any feedback you guys have in the comments. I've been trying to do a video every day, and I hope you guys enjoy this get out of X rank from mid lane uh, series. If you have any other ideas for content, let me know. I really appreciate, pre appreciate you guys hanging out. I'll see you guys in the next video tomorrow. Peace.